Hey you guys, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for designers, artists and creators. My name is Laszlo, I'm a graphic designer, illustrator here at Dantier and Blog, and today I want to show you a little known way of how to make your own GIFs using nothing but Photoshop. Now the beauty of making GIFs or GIFs in Photoshop is that you don't need very serious animation skills whatsoever. Photoshop offers you a very simple and quick option to make your graphics move. If you just want to do something simple like, you know, this kind of stuff. I want to show you this basic process because I think this is the perfect first step into the world of motion graphics. To be good at animating you're gonna have to develop a sense and understanding of motion and for that I believe this is the perfect beginner level exercise. So without further ado let me show you how to do this. First of all let's make a new document something not too big so our file size will stay small let's say a 500 by 500 pixel square at 72 point per inch. Now bring in your graphic that you want to animate. I'm going to use our logo for our example here, which is a PNG with no background. I would recommend a piece of graphic similar to this one, as in just a shape with only a handful of colors and a transparent background. Now the animation I want to make is the logo floating into the middle, getting bigger and bigger as if it gets closer to the viewer. So what I need to do is copy my logos layer a couple of times and then resize the logo in these new layers. So you go and duplicate the layer, then I select my logo here on the new layer and with the transform controls I grab one corner and bring it in slightly so it becomes smaller. Now repeat this a couple of times, I reckon 5 or 6 layers are enough to make a naturally flowing animation here. Now eventually we will turn these layers onto our frames, so it helps if you keep them in the right corner. It will also help if you give the layers proper names. The way I did mine is I kept the final frame, so the logo as it is now, at the bottom layer. And then the logos on these other layers on top are gradually getting smaller and smaller. But you can organize them the other way around as well, as long as they stay in chronological order. Once I got this sorted, I select them all and I align them to the center with these buttons on the top. Just hit align vertically and then horizontally as well. Okay, all set. Now the key that will unlock the ability to animate in Photoshop is the timeline. You don't see this by default, so you have to go to window and then tick timeline. Now we go to our timeline window and click on create frame animation. This will create a timeline of frames that we can play with. Now on the right here click and look for the make frames from layers option. This will automatically make our first rough animation for us and if you click the play button you can actually see what it looks like at the moment. Now for me it flows the other way around. I would want to make the logo grow big instead of shrinking so I go back to these options here on the right and I click on reverse frames. That's better. Now under all frames there is a little timer that shows you how long the frame is going to be visible in the animation sequence. For the most part I do want to leave them at 0 seconds so they just move seamlessly frame by frame. But then once the animation is complete I want it to stop for a bit so people can actually see the logo. So for the final frame I put 1 second. Oh yeah, since my logo is white I brought in a grey background just so I can see what I'm doing here. And when I clicked on the create frames from layers, obviously Photoshop has made a frame of the background layer as well. So if you did the same thing, just select this frame and click on this little bin icon on the bottom to delete it from the timeline. Now if your graphic is a solid color picture, your work probably looks quite nice already. But since I went with a white logo, I'm going to turn on my background just to see what the animation will look like on the top of other content. I have to do this by turning the background layer on manually on all the frames one by one. Now one other thing that would help my transition is to play with the opacity settings a little. So leave the final logo layer at 100% but turn the other layers down a little. Here you can see I am turning down the one above the final one by about 20% then the next one about 40-ish percent and so on and so on. Now let's do a chest run. See I made a little mistake here so I thought I would leave this in to explain how to correct this because you might do the same thing at some point during this process. 
what is happening is my top layer is now visible in all frames so if that happens all you have to do is go through your frames by clicking them on one by one and then turn off this layer's visibility on the, on the timeline except for the one frame that is supposed to be showing this layer of course okay that's better now let's save our work first i just saved the psd file so we got that covered then what we have to do is actually export our gif oh yeah first i need to turn my background layer off so i only make a gif of my logo Now you go File, Export and Save for Web. Now here there are a bunch of settings you might want to experiment with. Of course the most important one is making sure that our final file format is set to GIF. Here on the side you can see all the colors of the GIF. You can modify these as well if you need to. For example if your GIF is more complicated and you might want to dumb it down a little, it might work to try to decrease the column numbers just so the file will become smaller. Here you can also set up if you want the GIF to loop continuously or if you would only want it to play once. Then click on save, give it a name and there you go, it's done. Now I quickly went back and did another version where I keep the background in so you guys firstly see how this can actually look in a final GIF file. And I also wanted to show you this other option that I think is quite useful here. You can take certain colors away from the GIF if you need to by making them transparent. All you have to do is select the color in this box here and then you click on this button and it will get rid of it. I found this little option can be quite useful if you want to get rid of let's say the background of a GIF manually. Alright, we have our GIF, there you go. That wasn't very hard, was it? Now hopefully, now you understand the basic process of making frame-by-frame -frame animations. So I would encourage you to play with this and see what's possible. You know, with the same principles, you can easily make another animation where the graphic grows out from the side instead of the middle by making layers that are transformed and squished onto one side like this one. Another thing that's quite common is adding some light rays to your designs that are, you know, blinking so it looks like it's shining. You know how to create that Instagram sticker cute effect. Here all I did is I made a couple layers where I would have these thick lines which I just quickly made by color filling some thin rectangular selections. And then you build the frames in a way that one has the rays around your graphics then the other frame doesn't. In this particular case two frames are actually enough to make a smooth animation so it couldn't be simpler. Or you can just simply make your graphic move by copying your layer and move the item somewhere else. I did this one quickly but I moved the logo slightly off camera so it looks like it's dropping down. Something like this. Once you know what you're doing you will be able to bash these out in a couple of minutes really. Now just to show you some seemingly more complicated examples, look at this one. No more than a handful of frames, but thanks to all these subtle changes and the different layers and the right timing, it looks convincing enough. And that's all you want from these, really. Now, I feel compelled to tell you that making GIFs in Adobe Photoshop in 2020 is oftentimes not really the way to go. It's a quick solution that you might take advantage of if you really need to do something simple. But if you want to do some more complex motion graphics, you're probably going to have to invest your time and energy in apps like Adobe Premiere Pro as well as Adobe After Effects. Those are the professional apps which do look quite complicated and intimidating at the first sight. I know, I have been there as well. But those are really the professional apps that 
you're gonna have to use for more complicated stuff basically. I wanted to make this tutorial because I do believe that doing GIFs in Photoshop is a really nice first step into this way of learning and understanding how motion graphics work essentially. But if you want me to do tutorials in some more advanced stuff like After Effects just let me know down in the comments and make sure that you are joining our little design tribe so we can always see your upcoming content. We make videos in the subject of art, design, architecture, interior design and everything in between. Take care guys and I'll see you next week with another video. Bye.